Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. So, we've had this shooting in Farmington, and let's talk about the aftermaths of a mass shooting. So, the day after a mass shooting, I can tell you what happens uh, firsthand because of what happened in De- on December 7, 2017, but also what has happened to my community since the shooting that happened uh, a day, two days ago now. First, You'll find out that there find that there's a call for help for the victims of the crime. Um, usually, there's people that surround them. Um, churches hold candlelight vigils. My church was one of the first one that did that I can see. Um, or they start holding prayer um, rituals, prayer, you know, masses basically for the victims and for the community to heal. The next thing is there's a call to action usually. And usually this is done out of anger. And what happens here is there's usually people that come out and say, we need more gun laws. Um, they, they skip over the main incident, except for in our case, it's kind of a glaring incident that this uh, last shooter had some mental issues. And he was, other than that, he was an upstanding kid from what we're seeing. Um, the kid was active in sports. He was, uh, you know, something set him off. Well, what I've noticed lately on Facebook and on YouTube and on the social media sphere, Twitter, is this uh, number of 225 shootings that have happened, mass shootings that have happened in the United States since uh, the beginning of the year. And it's only, you know, sorry, April 7th, or not April, March 17th, not March, May 17th. God, still waking up. Sorry about that, guys. But if you look at the numbers, and the numbers you can find on Wikipedia, it'll actually show you the individual incidents. And there are mass shootings. Um, They are, by definition, mass shootings. There are multiple people killed. But what you find in them, there's a lot of murder-suicides, where one person went nuts, killed their entire family. Um, That is a mass shooting by definition. However, it is not what they're typically were billed with before the CDC changed definitions. Now... We're fighting four definitions, it looks like. So there's a Stanford MSA data project. Three or more people shot in one incident, including the pro- uh, excluding the perpetrator. That's one definition. Uh, mass shooting tracker is four plus shot in the incident at any one location at roughly the same time. Gun violence archive, this is Vox. Um, which is always going to be biased, is four shot in any one incident excluding the perpetrators at any one location. Mother Drones calls it three plus shot killed in one incident excluding the perpetrator. Washington Post uh, definition is four plus shot killed in any one incident excluding the perpetrator at a public place. Uh, That should be the one that's more correct, I would think. Um, And Congressional Research Services, which is four shot killed in one incident, excluding the perpetrators at public places, excluding gang-related killings, acts carried out that are inspired by criminal profit and terrorism. So that one is actually the one I would say is the actual correct definition of a mass shooting. So with that, this fits this last shooting in Farmington, New Mexico, actually does uh, match up to a mass shooting. However, what we're looking at with this, and it's very disingenuous when they focus on these shootings, if you fire a gun in a crowd, you're going to hit more than one person. Okay? That's just simple math. I mean, you can't, bullets don't stop once they hit something. They keep going. Unless it's hard enough or hardened hardened enough to stop a bullet. So, why do I even mention this stuff? Because if you look at the data the raw data of where the number of people dying is in the greatest column, it's still in suicides. And I would argue that a lot of these mass shooters are suicide attempts. They're suicide by cop or suicide by themselves because they get cornered and they kill themselves. Which begs the question, again, are we looking at a gun problem or are we looking at a mental health problem? If suicide is the biggest contributor to deaths in the United States, 
then what the hell is causing people to want to kill themselves? And you don't have to go far just looking around in social media or just looking at the news. You know, I made this point on Facebook today, and um, I do this because I'm kind of poking the bear because I see a, I have leftist friends um, because I'm trying to let them see that there's some sanity in our community. There has always been sanity in the 2A community. But with this, when you're saying, the point I was making was, take a uh, go look at every headline on whatever news site you choose right now. Compare that to three years ago. Now, ask yourself, is this normal? Compare it to five years ago. We're seeing people throwing temper tantrums. We're seeing people mentally breaking down while talking to congressional appointees so that they can't speak. I mean, you look at John Fed- uh, I think his name is John Fetterman. He's the um, senator from Pennsylvania that has had a, um, a brain aneurysm. And he was yesterday in the congressional hearings, spoke up and uttered this string of utter nonsense to someone in an official meeting and the guy couldn't answer the question because he didn't know what the question was. But we're all brainwashed into thinking that that's normal, that we have to accept that as normal. And that's not the case. It's never been the case. You know, Diane Feinstein has come out and said she's been in um, Washington or in Congress the whole time. She's not. She's been out of office because of shingles and because she's ancient as hell. And I think that's a a very telling thing is that we see people getting into office that aren't willing to leave office when their age starts to affect their duties. And that's not just there. That's everywhere that there is power that to be gained or money to be made. If you look at what our situation is in the United States and in the world globally right now, and you just do that simple comparison of headlines... And ask yourself, why is this normal? Why are we normalizing guys that are cross-dressing? You know, cross-dressing's always been a fringe thing. Uh, Rock bands have done it. I don't really care. You do you if you're an adult. But why are we pushing this now? Okay? Why why is Target selling um, swimsuits for boys that are fashioned after ladies' fashions but with tucking accessories given with them when you buy the the uh, the swimsuit. That's not normal. We've never had this in society. You know, you see people like the night Trump won. You saw people throwing them the day after. You saw them throwing themselves on the ground screaming, no, no, no. Why? This isn't a normal event. You know, going on a subway used to be a safe thing. Um, in a lot of countries, it still is. But if you go to New York or, or even San Francisco, you see that there's a mental health problem with people walking around on it. Not just the riders, but the other passengers. You know, Dave Chappelle came out and said outright <laughs> that San Francisco has turned into a shithole. And he's being roasted for it because, you know, he was speaking honestly. You cannot look at San Francisco five years ago and compare it to now and see that there hasn't been a very bad decay. And why is that? It's because of policy. You know, we have some something like two hundred or two thousand there's thousands of gun bills on the on the docket, or not on the docket, on the ledger already. And gun violence still happens. Why? If the gun, what what they're saying when they want to ban something is that none of the laws that they have gotten passed for uh, gun control were effective. So why keep doubling down and quote, why keep being insane when we can actually start making some headway and talking about what the real issue is in the United States and it's mental health. You cannot abjectly look at the news, look at what's going on around you in society and not see that people have lost their damn mind. And you have to look at why. What's changed in the last three to five years? 
Number one, I would say, is the lockdown. There's a lot of uh, trauma that is associated with that. I could speak to that myself. Um, I find myself being less social than I was before that. Um, So that was probably by design, is the way I see it. But go farther than that. Five years ago, you know, we'll, we'll mix in Trump with Biden. And you can look at the headlines, and they went absolutely nuts. You know, the, the Steele dossier uh, and the Durham report finally came out, and it shows that the FBI absolutely colluded. And they absolutely colluded with the uh, Clinton campaign. And no one's doing anything about it. That's because no one's actually willing to talk about the FBI and how they're that corrupt. How did they get that corrupt? We've allowed social media and the algorithms to push this weird narrative that the most general people don't like. You know, it's now encouraged that if you are a straight cis male, and that's what that means, cis male, uh, just a normal dude basically, that you are homophobic or transphobic if you won't date a trans female. Now think about that. If you're not willing to go out with a dude who has a mental issue, which is on the DM, DSM-5 uh, list of spectrum of uh, mental health issues, and they still have their male genitalia, and you're not willing to date that male, you're transphobic. This is the culture of the left that is trying to push their ideal on you, who just simply is a normal person. You can't engage with a trans female and say you're straight. I'm sorry, that's just not how it works. Nor has it ever worked that way. You know, you, you, we are li- living in stupid times where people think that the social media algorithms are reality. You know, we, we talk about gun bans, or they talk about g- gun bans, and I talk about them because I have, oh, well, I don't have to, but I do with this podcast, and how they're ineffective. But they're negating the reality of the situation. You know, in the shooting that happened on mon- Monday, okay, what would have been different had one or more of those people been able to respond to the threat in an active fashion? They had to wait for law enforcement to get there. And I'm not demonizing law enforcement on this. I mean, law enforcement responded heroically and they took down the shooter. But how long did it take them to get there? Again, that's not their fault. They have calls. They, you know, I've talked about how I listen to the police scanner and I hear parents calling for service because they can't parent their kid. Well, how many of those damn calls happen that law enforcement probably would have been pushed around to go deal with when this incident happened? Now, they dumped them and they put the resources where they needed to. But immediately, even Chief Hebe started saying this guy had an AR-15, and then videos from live, uh, not live, ring videos from the neighborhood came up. And they're showing the kid walking around with a pistol, or a couple pistols. Now, I'm sure there's an AR-15 when the first incident or the first contact happened with this person, or at the end of the contact. Maybe that was where they finally saw the AR-15. But it has started this conspiracy around this that the police are lying. And until they start showing actual videos or photos of uh, what was recovered, the guys that are spreading the conspiracy aren't wrong. It's not a conspiracy. The proof is in the pudding. And that's what, honestly, the media is trying to do right now. They're telling you not to believe your own eyes, not to believe your own heart, when in reality we know there's some hardcore realities of situations. You know, why wouldn't someone use an AR-15 if they were going to do something like that? It's the most efficient tool for any job that requires force. Um, That's exactly why the American people need to have it. It is that balance and that safety check 
that our government needs um, because they're growing beyond their means. Um, they're trying to push their will on you. And agents of the state will come and force you into their bubble, whether you like it or not. What are you going to do to stop it? We're in that golden hour right before the fall where there needs to be enough of us that say no or that there's enough of us that just ignore any of these new laws that are coming out that just don't matter to us. They don't affect us. Banning guns does not affect you in the way you think it does. Banning guns means that you are no longer legally able to have them that does not preclude you from having them. And they don't understand that. You know, if laws worked 100% as engineered by the left, we wouldn't have a drug problem right now in the United States. We wouldn't have a border crossing issue right now because the law would have stopped these people from doing things. The fact of the matter is, laws don't stop people. People stop people. It is your own mentality that changes you into a person that's either going to allow society to exist and you will exist in society and follow its rules or you won't. And that's simply the fact. There's, there's a, the correctional facilities are filled with people that have zero regard for those laws. And until we have a lot of the law-abiding citizens say we're not going to do this anymore and stop complying with these unjust laws. They're going to keep putting them on the books. You know, the fact that we have 100,000 people plus that have already filed for the pistol brace uh, rule stuff with the ATF so that they could get their SBR, because that's what they made them into, um, registered. You're inviting the government into your life for an item that was 100% legal until they said no. You know, I mentioned this many times, that the cannabis industry is thriving in the states that it's allowed. Why is that? It's because they ignored the law. Simply put. Did it change anything? No. The people changed it. The fact that people ignored the law made them change the law. The same thing happened with alcohol. And that's where we're at in the two-way. It is heartbreaking to see so many of these incidents where people go and twist off and kill people. But the only thing, antidote I have found, my personal belief is, is to be able to fight back and to some degree be able to help those around you. You know, I mentioned the training stuff and having an IFAC or a, a individualized first aid kit so that you are individual first aid kit so that you could render aid to yourself or to those around you in an incident like this you know how many times in New Mexico have I rolled up on an accident where I've had to, to help someone I've done that you know in New Mexico it's technically a law if you're the first on scene you're supposed to render aid how many people do it nowadays? How many people just... Oh, I don't want... They, they look away from the bus that's coming down the pipe just to be hit by it later. You can stick your head in the sand and ignore all you want. But the hard, cold, cold reality is that the world isn't getting any kinder. And it's not going to. And the longer we nurture these uh, weak individuals and let them understand, let them get their way, or force their way on us, the more likely these incidents continue to happen. You know, why is suicide so high? Because we have raised a generation of weak-minded people. And I say that not degrading suicide, but that these people don't have a coping mechanism to deal with the trials and tribulations of their life and it needs to be fixed. And the only way that gets fixed is acknowledging what the hell the problem is. So as we keep talking 
in this circle. Ban this. And people say, no, you can't ban this. We need to be more of an amplifying force and say, this is not a gun problem. This is a mental health problem. And bring up other examples from other parts of the culture that show that this is a mental health problem. Again, the easiest, lowest hanging fruit to show is the simple, the trans stuff. This has to have some part of the trend component, some part of the actual component, and some part of the social media component pushed on it for it to be such an issue right now that it's being amplified on the stage that it is. Because we all knew trans people before this. Um, They were rare, but they weren't so rare that we wouldn't run into one in our lifetime. But now, when you have a graduating class or a school that has 25% of them versus the less than 1% or 2%, we need to look at why. What's causing this? Is it something in the water? Or is it something in the culture itself? And I would argue it's more so probably something in the culture or a combination of all the circumstances involved. And this is where we need to put our flag in the ground and stand on this hill and die. Because the minute you back down from your Second Amendment rights is the minute that they can come in and roll over you. And they're already trying to do it. They're trying to other people, and if you don't know what other people means, put them on the out group So if you're a gun owner because they want to deal with you. The other thing you need to think about with this is that you need to be responsible when you do this. Don't give them an excuse to use force. You know, there there's a, a group of idiots running around called Patriot Front. And if you watch them, they look like feds. They all dress the same. They look they look remarkably like a lot of the SS video from World War II um, before the war, actually. And why? It's because it was designed to look that way. It was designed to attract people to it. That's what happened with January 6th, too, is they incited people to come. Then they egged on the battle. And people fell for it. Don't be an idiot. Look at it abjectly. You know, in the 2A community, in those guys that are trying to rise themselves up and and show that they're three percenters or whatever they are, name one of those scenes that you've seen that didn't have a fat person in it. Then compare it to Patriot Front. Joe Rogan brought that up. You know, I'm a fat person, but I'm trying to get down mostly before myself. But I'm also one of those fat people that still has enough shame in saying that I have some stuff that I need to work on. You know, there's some unhealthy ideas I had and some unhealthy habits I've gained that I need to correct. Why is that not a public health thing? And if it happens there, why is that not happening with mental health? I'm not saying be a whiny crybaby and say that, you know, you can just deal with it. Sometimes you need help. I got on medicine And I get pissed off when I see people like MTG and everybody else go, all these people that were on meds were the reason uh, for these shootings. Maybe. Maybe. But I really doubt that, actually. After living through that experience with medicines, um, I was on Zoloft for four or five years. What I learned from that was it was necessary at the time. But eventually I weaned myself off of it. Because I didn't want to be dependent on a medicine to make myself feel okay to exist. Some people don't understand that. Some people will continue to use that crutch. And our society encourages people to use crutches instead of healing so that you can deal with your own mental health. There's a mental fortitude gap that we have nowadays. And that is what I see is the problem. It isn't a 2A problem. This is a mental fortitude and a mental health issue. And you can see it time and time again when you see these whiny, overly crybaby people talking about anything. From guns to, 
I didn't get whatever online and you need to validate me. The fact that people are looking for self-validation rather than actually looking for self-fulfillment and happiness is a problem. What did we do to our society? Like, share, subscribe, be great.